mission at Inconex is to develop our proprietary cannabinoid combination products and psychedelic medicines um, as pharmaceutical products to gain regulatory approval, really generating the high quality evidence that you'd expect with any pharmaceutical product um, and generating that for these cannabinoid and psychedelic uh, drug products that we have. So treating them like any other pharmaceutical um, really allowing them to achieve their potential as therapeutic products. With arthritis, there are a lot of treatment options out there, um, ranging from sort of the conventional DMARDs, biologics, some of the recent blockbuster drugs and JAK inhibitors. And they all work for, for different groups of people. They have varying levels of efficacy, but a lot of these patients still experience substantial joint pain and that has an impact on their their ability to go about their their day-to-day -day lives and 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 function um whether it's tying their shoes doing the grocery shopping and that has a negative impact on their quality of life so they may have some disease control but there's still a lot of a lot of pain and that's what we're targeting it's it's that residual refract residual pain that that they're still experiencing so we're not looking to replace the uh the conventional treatments that are or the available treatments are out there we're looking to to supplement those and, and complement those and provide that relief for that that residual pain our drug product for that is designed for treating ra and other inflammatory diseases is ihl 675a it's a combination of cannabidiol or CBD and hydroxychloroquine sulfate. Hydroxychloroquine sulfate has been approved for treatment of, of RA and, and other diseases for, for a while now. Um, it's got a, a long history of safe use. And CBD is often used, um, I guess, in, in the wellness space, um, in the nutraceutical space, because it's known to have anti-inflammatory activity. Um, so our, our, our hypothesis when we started this program was that the two drugs would have synergistic anti-inflammatory activity. We confirmed that in a series of preclinical studies, starting with human innate immune cells and then taking it through a range of animal disease models. So we looked at, at a rheumatoid arthritis model, saw that there was uh, substantial both macroscopic and microscopic disease reduction. Um, so when we looked at the animal sort of joint swelling, it was reduced uh, more with the combination, more with IHL 675A than either CBD or hydroxychloroquine alone. Um, and, and when we completed the experiment, we sacrificed the animals, uh, looked at the joint tissue using histology, and again, saw that there was less joint damage um, in the animals that were treated with the combination than with, than with either drug alone. And we saw similar results when we looked at uh, animal models of inflammatory bowel disease and lung inflammation. So the the strategy now is is to take this combination product through and 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 test whether those results are are consistent in in humans. We we finished a phase one study demonstrated that the the unique formulation that we've developed is bioavailable. It, it's got favorable pharmacokinetics for both active pharmaceutical ingredients. So both the CBD and the hydroxychloroquine sulfate are, are absorbed. They're absorbed well to similar levels as the the reference listed drugs that we compared the, the drugs to in the in the phase one study. We also had a really good, well good tolerability for, for our combination product. Um, and that gave us the confidence to move forward into a phase two clinical trial assessing IHL 675A in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. It's a forearm study. So we have patients on IHL 675A. Then we also have patients on CBD alone, hydroxychloroquine sulfate alone, and placebo. And the rationale for that design is one, it allows us to understand the contribution of each drug to our, our drug product. Also gives us a placebo control, which is a, a gold standard for, for clinical trials. The comparison to the, the component drugs is really important for meeting something called the FDA combination rule, where we have to demonstrate that with combination products, each drug is making a contribution to the therapeutic effect of, of the combination product. Our primary endpoint is the change in rapid three score. So this, this is a score that looks at, at pain and function. Um, we're specifically looking at pain uh, as our primary endpoint, but also, also paying attention to the function. Some of our secondary endpoints are joint swelling, number of swollen joints, um, some other sort of traditional uh, rheumatoid arthritis 
um, patient reported outcomes. So these are surveys, questionnaires that the uh, that the patient completes um, about their disease and how it's impacting their quality of life. We're also looking at, at how much other pain medication these patients are using. So whether um, patients on IHL 675A are using different amounts of, of sort of standard anti-inflammatories, NSAIDs or, or painkillers, things like, like paracetamol, cetazolamide, um, and, and whether it's changing not only their, their daily um, use of, of these sort of other pain medications, but also their, their daily thoughts on their, their joint stiffness, their joint pain. Um, and we're looking at that over, over a 24 week period. So about six months. The, the optimal outcome is, is that we see a, a statistically significant reduction in, in pain in the patients who are on IHL 675A. And again, we, we'd like to see that results that are consistent with what we'd seen in the animal studies where where the combination product for IHL 675A is reducing the pain scores, um, improving function to a greater extent than either one of the drugs alone and, and the placebo, obviously, and that we're really making an, a pause, having a positive effect on the patient's um, quality of life by, by reducing their the, the impact of the disease um, on their lives by, by reducing that pain. It's an interesting question because I think that there there's a real potential for CBD to help people who are experiencing pain, inflammation, um, particularly associated with with chronic inflammatory diseases. I think CBD alone, it's a big hill to climb. I think, and this is part of the rationale for for Inconex's combination products, is that we're we're looking to combine cbd with with generic drugs so in the case of ihl 675a hydroxychloroquine this allows us to target different components of the inflammatory process um and, and when we think that gives us a real advantage over cbd only based products um there's, there's a lot of good work that's been done out there. there there's a lot of clinical trials observational evidence that's that indicates that cbd is is providing some benefit but but i think the combination strategy gives us a real leg up. Um, and that also provides us with a, a strong patent position, um, which which makes it uh, easier to invest the funds required to, to take CBD and, or our CBD containing product, IHL 675A through the sort of normal pharmaceutical development process, which is challenging. But uh, yeah, well, like I said, we're, we're, we're treating it like any other pharmaceutical product. So it, it is a full drug development. Um, but and we think that, that that allows us access to more patients, more physicians, because having that evidence base gives them the confidence to use the drug and for physicians to prescribe the drug. Um, and, ho and hopefully we, we once we have approval, um, it, it makes it more accessible. Um, and, and that evidence is and the clinical clinical data is, is, is the evidence that we need um, to get it across the line there. On IHL 675A, I think we've got a really exciting product that combines a well-established treatment for rheumatoid arthritis and hydroxychloroquine with CBD, which is a, a molecule, a drug that, that's getting a lot of attention. I think a lot of people are experiencing the benefit um, from our, our preclinical studies. We know that this combination has the potential to be a really really potent tool in the treatment of, of pain and reduced function in, in rheumatoid arthritis patients. And, and as I said, we're, we're looking to treat that, that residual pain on these patients who, who may have some disease control on, on established drugs, but we're looking to really improve quality of life um, for those patients with, with, with rheumatoid arthritis. <laughs>